Hello, internet. It's not Emily Karen Aaron. I know I, I meant for this video to go up days ago, but college just really wears you out. So I apologize. So before we get to our review, which is this, I got some movies. Not a whole lot, but I got four. And Three of them are from Fox. Well, technically, well, one's now involved. Well, Fox is now with Disney, so that makes things a bit confusing. But I have four movies here. One of them is a bit unknown, but I'm about to, I'll show it to you in a bit. I, I'm saving it for last. First is oh, oh no. Okay. This is Garfield. I know what you're thinking. Malik, how could you? I thought you had good taste. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I know, I know. I, be I betrayed you all. <laughs> but I saw this movie as a child. And I was like, I have to, I have to get this. I have to talk about this. It's just, just, just look at it. This is Bill Murray. He was tricked into doing this movie. You think I'm lying, but oh no, that's actually a fact. And I'll ex when I review this, I'm going to explain the whole story. Because it's very, very, um, fascinating. <laughs> so that's Garfield. And the second one here is a sequel. It is Ice Age The Meltdown, a.k.a. the only good sequel they ever made. <laughs> Although some people are like, oh, the third wasn't too bad, but the fourth and fifth, they could just burn. <laughs> but yes, this is the best of the sequels. And yeah, you can totally see that. And I actually saw, it was on Twitter, there's a, it was an old commercial where, I think it was at the time when the third movie was coming out, that Sid, he was in it, he was you know, actually, he was advertising Family Guy. And as you, as you already know, you can already imagine, those two things, Ice Age and Family Guy, don't go together. And if they did, and it showed Sid say straight up, no censoring, no, no hold back, no nothing. He literally says, he says sex. Like sex on TV. Because that's how the Family Guy theme, you know, the Family Guy theme song goes. Yes, he says sex. And I was just like, okay, I'm done with Twitter for the day. <laughs> just... My childhood is now completely destroyed thanks to that video. Thanks to that commercial. So that's wonderful. Uh, next up here is an animated film, another animated film, but this is 2D. This is from Marvel. And it is the Ultimate Avengers. This is not the MCU Avengers. This is no way involved with the MCU Avengers. No way involved. It actually came out six years before the Avengers even, with Joss Whedon, before that even happened. Actually, this came out two years before Iron Man. This was before the MCU happened. So for a lot of, you know, the mainstream, they didn't know who Giant Man was, and Wasp was, or really Thor. I mean, people knew Hulk from that awful Ang Lee movie. <laughs> but people really didn't know, they didn't know Black Widow. They kind of knew Captain America. They didn't really know Thor, they didn't really know Iron Man, but now they're all stars. Everyone recognizes these characters, thanks to Marvel and Cap Kevin Feige. But yes, this is an interesting movie to look at now. And I know there's a sequel, I couldn't find the sequel, so I'm not going to review the sequel. So yeah, that's Ultimate Avengers. And this final one... I don't know if any of you ever heard of it. It's, pro it's probably some movie that just... 
Um, I don't know. It, was, it played very small. It only made like a few million dollars, but has like such a big cult following that's gotten all these, you know, trilogies. I don't know why, but it's Star Wars. A New Hope. That's right. We're doing the originals. The OG Star Wars before the prequels and the new one. Hmm. <laughs> back when when most people would say back when Star Wars was really good. So this is, of course, episode four, A New Hope, aka the first Star Wars movie. They and when I was at McKay's, they did have episode five and episode six, but they all cost ten a good eleven dollars each. I didn't feel like spend thirty dollars in just three movies. That's just not a good way to spend money. So these episodes here are going to be more sporadic. Okay, they're gonna they're not going to be immediate. So yeah, all we have right now is episode four. I'll let you know when I get episode five and episode six. But for now, we have this. So that's all. It's a mix of. Yeah. <laughs> and there's one great one and the others that are just kind of knows <laughs> so very interesting all right a real review it's from sony everyone's favorite company i mean it's the same company that clearly doesn't know how to handle uh their security and gets hacked all the time yeah you know, maybe there's a good reason I don't have a PlayStation 4. <laughs> that might be why. But I know that was years ago, but it could happen again. You never know. So, this is from Sony Animation. You know, the same studio brought you um, Open Season, The Smurfs, Cloud for Chance of Meatballs, uh, recently The Emoji Movie, <laughs> um... And a hotel, mainly Hotel Transylvania. That's their only real successful franchise they got going for. Also, there's there's Spider Verse coming, which I am ex excited for. So, we're doing their second movie, Surfs Up. And I know what you're thinking, Malik. They made a sequel to this with WWE characters. Are you gonna watch that? No, <laughs> I refuse. I already saw like a video, a review of it online. That was all I needed to see. It looked so bad, and like v Mr. McMahon, he was an otter, right? And what he did is so disgusting and disturbing, and just makes my makes me want to burn out my eyes. He, he milks a fish by sticking a straw up a fish's butt and then drinking it. Now you all understand why I don't want to review it. So we're doing the original. We're sticking with the original. So this movie actually has, you know, stars... Well, the voice actors are Shia LaBeouf. This was... 2007 was... Some would say it was his year. I mean, he had a hit with Disturbia. You know, he had this. And then he, a month after this, he had Transformers. And then a year after that, he had Indiana Jones 4. And then it all went downhill. With a bunch of mug shots. And wearing a paper back to a red carpet premiere. And yeah. But I will always remember him from Holes. I really should review that, but I don't feel like doing it right now. <laughs> um, who else? We got Jeff Bridges. Did, see, this was... With Jeff Bridges, this is before he had his real um, turnaround with Crazy Heart and True Grit. Before he had those voice that always sounds like this, and you would never understand what he's saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is before that era. You got Zoe Deschanel from The Happening, Mark Wahlberg's wife from The Happening, who has this this blank, dead stare in her eyes that just makes the movie makes that movie even more hilarious than it already is. 
And then we got um, John uh, Heater, who you may know from a little movie called Napoleon Dynamite. Yes, that Napoleon Dynamite. And he plays this, this, this chicken. Chicken Joe. Why is there a chicken in this movie? I wish I could tell you. <laughs> So, of course, this is all about penguins. Penguins were all the rage in the mid-2000s. I and mean, you had Madagascar, you had that March of the Penguins documentary, and you had Happy Feet. Penguins were everywhere. It was an epidemic. It was... They were inescapable. They were almost like minions, except a little less aggressive than the minions. So, yeah... You want to read that? Well, you can try. It's it's kind of hard to read, actually. I don't know why they would use this font, this color. I don't get it. <laughs> but, okay. Come and join Cody Shia LaBeouf, a rock hopper penguin, as he journeys from his home in Shiverpool, Antarctica, to take part in the Big Z Memorial Surf Off on beautiful Pengu Island. During his adventure, he meets a, he meets many new friends, including Surf Nut, Chicken Joe, John Hitter, Hitter and Spirited Lifeguard, uh, Yanni, 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 Nani. I think I just created. I I, I I'm ashamed of myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is this meme that's been going everywhere. Well, at least a couple months ago, where it says, Nani, Nani. And it just, it's so weird. I remember from a Steve Harvey video. It was, uh, I watched a little too much YouTube that day. You know, this is the e Lonnie in Zoe Chanel. Cody believes that winning is everything until he meets Geek, Jeff Bridges. Great name. An old washed up pro surfer who just may show Cody that a true winner isn't always the one who comes in first. So, as you are, the first thing that's popping in your head is, why are penguins surfing? Why are they surfing waves? Why are they doing any of this? This goes against penguin logic and rules. And... <sighs> I mean, I mean, if it's, if it's the movie's way of differentiating itself from all other penguin movies and it succeeded but it's still strange like i mean when you think of penguins the first i'm pretty sure the first thing that doesn't come to mind is "Ooh, i want these penguins to surf no <laughs> that does not come to mind at all and uh, also with this movie, it does a it's almost filmed like a documentary, which is even stranger for this type of movie. It is all it's all it's pretty much like a documentary of the whole um the way you know sequence of events goes. There's like all these talks, all these interviews, and like all this footage, and it's just it's so weird. This movie is a strange little thing, and maybe that's why people like it so much, because it's so different. And yeah, that would make sense. So, pros and cons. Pros, the animation. The animation is not bad. It's pretty decent. You know, considering this is Sony Animation's second feature film. This is some, uh, some decent looking animation. Not too bad. It's definitely not Pixar or even DreamWorks, but it still it still looks oh, you know, you can still look at it without turning away, <laughs> I guess. Uh, our characters, they're more or less likable. They're I mean, Cody is basically your Average protagonist, underdog protagonist in this story. And of course, Jeff Bridges, he's the mentor in this story. And then you got, um, you got Chicken Joe here, who is his best, who is his friend. 
still don't understand why on earth there's a chicken in Antarctica that doesn't make any sense. That's like putting, that's like putting a polar bear on the moon. But come on. <laughs> I mean, that, that type of stuff just bothers me. It bothers me so much. And then you got this penguin with, with a squid friend. You know, I don't know why she has a squid friend, but this movie is just... It's in its own league. <laughs> which, I guess... I, which, I guess, explains its somewhat cult following. Uh, let's see. Cons. The movie does have a very familiar story. You know, all stories about, oh, you're an underdog. You really want to win, but... Re but in the end, winning really doesn't matter. You know, you don't have to... Well, some would say, oh, winning does matter. This is... This is... This is 2018. 18. I... That was... Oh, my God. I'm botching so hard. <laughs> but this is 2018. Winning is everything. That's what most people will tell you. And to some degree, that's true. No one likes being a loser. That's a fact. But, you know, there are different ways in being a winner. And this is the exact same message that Cars did a year before this. Didn't think I would notice that. Surf's up fans. Didn't think, didn't think I would notice that this movie stole from Cars. Well, now you know. Uh... Yeah, this, this movie is so strange in so many ways. But it's still a good movie. It's a shame it didn't do well at the box office. That's a real shame because, I mean, it, it's sad when a movie like Shrek the Third, a movie that I think is completely terrible, makes hundreds of millions of dollars more than a movie like this. And it's, it's, it was sad. 2007 was a dark time in movies. <laughs> you had movies like Spider-Man 3, uh, Shrek the Third, Pirates 3, Transformers, Alvin and the Chipmunks. What else? Resident Evil 3, <laughs> uh, Rush Hour 3, um, I Now Pronounce the Chuck and Larry. You know, 300 was good. But, um, you know, Ghost Rider. Just a bunch of self-par movies that make so much money. I mean, granted, there were some good movies that made money. Like the Simpsons movie, Hairspray. Um, again, 300. B-movie. I don't care what you say. B-movie is a classic. I Am Legend has a mixed, is a mixed bag for most people. Um, Enchanted, there's another one. But yeah, 2007 was a dark time for film. It definitely was. But it was a, a, a more fun time. You didn't have to deal with Twitter all day long. You didn't have to deal with SJWs all day long. You didn't have to deal with all this the garbage we have now. So that's a plus. Part of me wishes... I, I, I wish my modern self... You know, lived during this... This decade in films. Because I think... You know, that would be really cool. You know, to look back in the... In the early, you know, mid-2000s. And just to see, you know... How things change. Because... That was my childhood. <laughs> so overall, this movie is interesting. I mean, it has good animation, decent characters, a familiar story, but just all these strange elements to it that kind of make it good. So 7 out of 10 for Surf's Up. Yes, yeah, Surf's Up. 7 out of 10. Next review uh, is a movie I've wanted to review.
for a long time. I recently got it. It's, it's, it's none of the movies that I just showed you. But it's a movie that I'm, I've, I've seen plenty of times and I know all about it. Considering it's going to get a reboot in two years, I thought it would be appropriate to talk about it now. And actually, th this movie's actually about to turn 20 years old. Now that I think about it. In a few months. That is the Rugrats movie. And I have some things to talk about in that video. So make sure you tune in for that. So make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment. And I will see you all next time. And I am...